Well, I've been wanting to do this for a while. This is Romans chapter 7. Um, I wanted to do this um, because I wanted to show that uh, it's a very difficult passage to get the gist of. And you really have to follow it uh, back through Romans 6 to Romans 8 to get the idea of how Romans 7 works. But if you start reading Romans 6, you start to see that Paul is doing a before and after. Before and after. You'll notice that when you used to do this, but now. There's a lot of but nows in, uh, in the pages here. And even in Romans 8, it says, but now there is therefore, or but, but there is therefore now. <laughs> so it's, it's like, but there is therefore now. So there was a before and an after. It's very important that we pick out the before and after. I'm going to pick it up at uh, Romans 7, verse 14. We know that the law is spiritual, but I am unspiritual, sold as a slave to sin. Now, this particular statement, many people believe that it is in the present tense, but think about it. If if the law is spiritual, but you're unspiritual, does that mean you have the Spirit of God living in you? If you're unspiritual? Are you sold as a slave to sin? If you have been bought with a price by Christ? So when we look at verse 14, we have to conclude here that Paul is talking about a time when he was sold as a slave to sin. And then he goes on to say in 15, I do not understand what I do, for what I want to do, I do not do. But what I hate to do, that I do. And if I do what I do not want to do, I agree that the law is good, as it is no longer I myself who do it, but sin living in me. He's talking about being a, a point where he's not set free from sin. This is not to say that nobody sins. But there is definitely, when Paul is speaking here, he's speaking about, he says, we know that the law is spiritual, but I am unspiritual. Uh, and, we know, and he says he's sold as a slave to sin. But you see, we're no longer slaves. Sin shall no longer be your master, since you're no longer under the law. That's Romans 6.14. So I'm going um, to just kind of pick out the before and afters. Um, so, um, here it is, um, but thanks be to God that though you used to be slaves to sin, this is Romans six seventeen. you see how it's, you used to be slaves to sin. In Romans six seventeen, he's making the point that you used to be slaves. So when he's speaking in Romans seven fourteen, I'm a slave, how come he's telling everybody that they used to be slaves, Right? But thanks, this is Romans 6, 17, before he said, I'm a slave, right? Sold under sin. Now he's saying, but he said beforehand in Romans 6, 17, but thanks be to God that though you used to be slaves to sin, you have come to obey from your heart that pattern of teaching that now, that now claimed your allegiance. You have been set free from sin and have been become slaves of righteousness. You see, we're looking at a time before you're set free because Paul is making a pattern here. And the pattern started back in Romans 6. He basically, the, the synopsis of this or, or the fruition of this is, uh, is Paul is making an illustration of, of Romans 6.14. For sin shall no longer be your master because you are not under law but under grace. And this is why it goes, it skips down, but thanks be to God that though you used to be slaves, you have become, you have come to obey from the, your heart the pattern of teaching that now has claimed your allegiance. And then we go down, we're going to skip down to six, uh, to, is it 720s? Uh, uh, you, uh, when you were slaves to sin, you were free from the control of righteousness. What benefit did you reap at that time from the things that you're now ashamed of? But notice it says you were, when you were slaves to sin, past tense. 
So when Paul is saying, I am sold as a slave to sin, is he speaking in the present tense or the past tense? Okay, and here it goes, but now. See, it starts off with Romans, uh, I think it's 720, and I should have marked it. But it's either 620 or 720, I think it's 720. When you were slaves to sin, you were free from con the control of righteousness. And then you go down to 22, but now that you have been set free from sin and have become slaves to God, the benefit you reap leads to holiness, being set free, and as the result is a eternal life. So it's saying here that you, now that you've been set free from your slavery to sin, doesn't mean you're going to stop sinning, but that teaching of the Holy Spirit that teaches you grace to trust in Christ that your sins were taken away and you're no longer under the law, sets you free from habitual sin. And, um, and so uh, if, you're, if Paul is saying that he's a slave to sin, he's not a slave anymore because he has been set free by the power of God. Okay, and it goes on, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ. So here we see a whole bunch of before and after parts here. And here we go again. For when we were in the realm of the flesh, the sinful passions aroused by the law were in work at us, so that we bore fruit to death. But now, by dying to that, to what once bound us, we have been released from the law so that we serve in a new way of the Spirit. See, now here we're talking about having the Spirit and not in the old way of the written code. You know, so when Paul is saying that he's sold under, under sin, we're not looking at, we're, we're, we're turning a blind eye to this whole idea of being set free. So, my brothers and sisters, you also died to the law through the body of Christ that you might belong to another to him who was, raised, who was raised from the dead, in order that we may bear fruit to God. See, we can't bear fruit to God when we were slaves to sin. For when we were in the realm of the flesh, see, this is past tense, the sinful passions aroused by the law were at work in us, so that we bore fruit for death. But now, see, there's all these before, after, but now, by dying to what once bound us, we have been released from the law, so that we serve in a new way of the Spirit and not in the old way of the written code. So when Paul's speaking in Romans 7, he's talking about a, a state of being in slavery before and being set free after. Verse 7, what shall we say then? Is the law sinful? Certainly not. Nevertheless, I would not have known what sin was had it not been for the law. For I would not have known what coveting really was had it not been said, do not covet. But sin, seizing the opportunity afforded by the commandment, produced in him, made him a slave to every kind of coveting. coveting. See, this is what the command does. It makes you a slave. Satan has a hold of you as long as you're under the law. So did that which is good then become death to me? By no means. Nevertheless, in order that sin might be recognized as sin, it it used what was good to bring about my death, so that though the commandment, uh, through the commandment, sin might become utterly sinful. We know that the now we know that the law, and here we go, is spiritual. But I am unspiritual, sold as a slave to sin. And in this verse, you can't say that Paul is presently unspiritual and sold under slim, sin, because from the from the verses before, he himself says you've been set free. From that law and in Romans 8 it says but now there is therefore no condemnation in Christ Jesus so it carries on through through um, through uh, Romans 8 the victory that we have in Christ doesn't mean we stop sinning utterly stop sinning completely but you notice that there's a before state and an after state therefore there is now no cond condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus and that's um, you know, that's, that's, uh, that's basically showing a before and after picture. And um, um, here we have in Romans 8, The spirit you receive does not make you slaves so that you live in fear. Rather, the spirit you received brought about your adoption as sonship, and by him we cry, Abba, Father.
basically what I'm trying to give you is a way to, if you have habitual sins or you're struggling with sins,